Hello, everyone. Good to see everyone. Lynn from Homestead Owls again. I'll just get the chat up. Great to see you all here. How you all doing? Hope you're doing good. I'm feeling a lot better. Got a husband looking after me here, which is good. Can everyone see me? Give me a five by five if you can see me. I never know. None of us know until you tell us. Okay, so we've got uh, quite a few of you here that are uh, good friends. Great to see you. Okay, hi, Lynn. Kathy can see me. Great, Kathy. That's good. Well, today we're going to be talking about gardening. Great to see you tonight, Deborah says. Thank you all. Our morning, your night, Deborah. That's how it is. Yeah, I can see you. Great. Good to see you. Yeah, thanks, Jan. Thanks, Kathy. All right. So I thought I'd put up a gardening one because we're coming into our winter now. And excuse my face because it is all still numb. Be there for a few months. But don't worry if I dribble. doesn't matter. We're all friends here. Uh, I thought I'd talk about gardening because uh, a lot of you are in springtime in the northern hemisphere and you're, you're planning or you're doing your garden right now. But and some of you haven't got a big garden, you've only got a small garden. Whatever you've got, I just want to hear what you're doing and, and what you're planning. Ghetto, great to see you, mate. Hello, Mrs. Oz, good to see you. And uh, Wayne and I might leave our garden and I'll just do a few maybe raised beds this winter. Uh, usually we do have a really big winter garden too, but just because I haven't been feeling best, he thought, oh, well, leave it a bit. But I want to hear. Happy Mac, great to see you, mate. Jean W., yeah, that's great. Um, thank you, JT. Yeah, I'm feeling better. i got to feel better. i got to keep cooking Wayne some nice meals and looking after him a bit, okay? A little drill between friends. That's why we love you. Exactly happy, mate. Monty, good to see you. Yeah, so uh, if you could write up, it's a bit hard because I can't get you up here because, uh, you know, a lot of you don't want to come up for starters and you just want to talk in the chat, but... I really want to hear what you're doing. I know Happy Max has been doing some um, good stuff over there. He's getting a, another knee replacement. But, uh, yeah, that, that's the thing. We've all got things that we've got to accommodate as well as get our prepping going. So I don't want to talk fluffy gardening. I want to talk because we know food shortages are coming up. We know that, well, they're here now. They won't, what am I saying? They're going to get a little bit worse. That's an understatement. So gardening, as you know, for Wayne and I, is our passion for survival. And I always say that. What seeds, even if you say what seeds you've got. But, uh, you know, when we've got that mentality like they had back in the Great Depression and the World War Twos, you can enjoy gardening. It's still a hobby like it was a few years ago when we're all in that uh, happy phase of the roaring 20s, as I say. But we've, we've all become a lot more serious in our planning of how we survive. And gardening for us is the way. You know, we can a lot of food, as you know. We, uh, you know, I have a lot of dried food too. And we've got other options as well. Wayne's great with the farm animals and um, he's, he makes us... Our, it makes us survive by having our own meat and all the rest, but a garden will stand you in good stead, and that's why I'm here today is to talk about that. Krista's Suburban Prep Stand, great to see you. Green Thumb Prepper, now he's a great gardener. Just go check out his channel. Great, good to see you, mate. Joe Morgan, good to see you. Yeah, always see Joe around the traps, always delighted to see Joe. Um, okay, so Jen, Jen's, okay, we've got a few. Deborah says, at the moment, we have squash coming on, also tomatoes. Now, um, I think your squash is like a butternut pumpkins, maybe. I'm not sure what your squash is. So you might have to write what that is. Squash is squash, I suppose. Kathy might be able to interpret that for me. Jan Penland says, I'm growing potatoes, tomatoes, peppers, hot and sweet, yellow summer squash. Oh, I get you. I know the squash you mean now, Deborah. Uh, cucumbers, watermelon, cantaloupes, kirsch, kirsch, your squash, I haven't heard of that before, onions. Wow, you're really going for it, Jan. That's great. You're going to have a good supply of food there and a lot of those that you, you can actually preserve if you've got enough in too. Awkward Texan, great to see you, mate. Arkansas living. I hope your bread turned out. I heard before you were making bread. Hope that turned, or it's probably still baking. It wasn't long ago. No. 
Crooked necks, crooked neck squash. Okay, well, that'll be interesting. I'm going to look that up, Deborah, and see what that is. Thanks, JT. Appreciate that. Uh, now we've got hand cramps. Sorry for abbreviations. <laughs> That's all right, Joe. No problem. Uh, okay, so squash is crooked neck squash. Okay, and like zucchinis too. Okay, got it, Kathy. Right. I mean, you know, a talk between countries, you know, our interpretation of things can be different. So, yeah, hoot how great to see you, mate. Always a hoot to see you. So I'm pleased to see you. And uh, so years ago when Wayne and I were first married, and, you know, when you're first married, you're trying to save and everything, we we survived on our gardens then. But as, you know, we, we ran the farm, we always had a garden, but I didn't I didn't think seriously enough about it as a survival thing until probably about uh, 10 years ago, I'd say, and I really started to think seriously about what could come in the future and all the rest. I was always into that, so I was Wayne. We're always talking scenarios and all the rest. But, you know, gardening is a thing that keeps you fit, you get fresh air, and you get such a reward by thinking you didn't go to that supermarket, pick out a, a yucky bag of carrots for $2.50 and have no taste, you know. Now I've got some more. Okay, green thumb prepper. His name's a good name for this live today. I've got eight kinds of tomatoes, six kinds of peppers, two kinds of onions, 700 or so, great, two kinds of spinach, two kinds of parsley, two kinds of chard, two kinds of kale, great, cucumber melon and two kinds of, three kinds of zucchini. Okay, now... Um, the three kinds of peppers, I presume you've got sweet peppers and hot peppers, green thumb prepper. I'm presuming that. And the onions, you've probably got fresh ones that you, you know, you'll use over summer and then you've probably got a variety, I'd say, that you're going to keep longer. That's how I'm presuming how you've planned that. Parsley, guys, is one of the best blood cleansers. So if you've all got parsley in your garden, it's just fantastic for cleaning the blood for women that have iron issues. It's fantastic. If you've got bad breath, put some parsley in your garden. It's fantastic for that too. And we grow heaps of zucchinis here. I put zucchinis in everything. All right, the chat's going through here. Corshaw, I hope I'm saying it right, Corshaw, Cushaw is a large winter squash. It's sometimes pronounced Kershaw. Got you. Got you, Jan. Thank you. Teresa D, great to see you. Zucchini, tomatoes, bell peppers, beans. Now, I mean, who you can't go wrong with beans. There's so many different varieties. I don't care what beans they are. Yeah, Wayne and I love beans. Wayne's mum used to just have buckets of beans and she'd just be peeling those beans, preserving them. My mum was the same too. Just beans are a good standby and good for you. Sunflowers, yeah. Josh over there in Yard Homestead, he grows a lot of sunflowers. Kathy does. Pumpkin, yeah, we all need pumpkin. So you've got your basics, you know, starches of your pumpkins, your tomato, uh, sorry, your potatoes, your some of the hard squashes, and we need them to keep over winter because we can't grow here, and a lot of you can't, a lot of things over winter. So things for winter storage is great. Okay, Paula Ainsley's put her, and she's in Queensland, and she's, uh, she's got a lot in red dandelion. That's interesting. See, Paula, you can grow ginger up there. We can't grow ginger here. I'm actually thinking of um, putting some under cover here, but you've got the perfect environment up there. Beans, tomato, potatoes. I keep saying tomatoes, my brain at the moment. Garlic. Now, garlic, we all know how valuable garlic is. And like Paula says here, some herbs and medicinal plants to name a few. That's what we need, those medicinal plants. The rosemary is so good for headaches. Uh, we've got our peppermints for digestion, and Kathy would speak out a lot of, she knows all about those things, about what they're good for. But, yeah, keep our medicines growing, and they're going to stand us in good stead in the future. Had lots of rain here this last week, so couldn't get to garden. Yeah, Paula, you guys up there have had bucket loads of rain. We've had a few friends comment and um, and talk to us and text us and say, oh, boy, that rain. So, you know, that's another thing we have to be aware of. Why and I this summer couldn't grow the things that we always grow because it was the wettest season in history here. So we, we're, we're learning to adapt to that a lot more. 
Joe Morgan says, gardening is, gardening is an awesome way to combat shortages, but it also needs to be worth the effort. If you spend $1,000 and get 50 bucks worth of vegetables, not cost effective. Joe, I'm glad you brought that, up that point, mate, because that is the thing. Wayne and I, because we've got the farm, we've got our manures. We, I make my own um, compost. Wayne's always made great big piles of compost. We can do that because we have all the resources on the farm. But if you, like Joe said, have to go to, uh, you know, we call Bunnings, I think you guys have Walmart or farm supplies and all that, and spend that $1,000, Joe's right. You know, you've got to work out whether it's worthwhile you planting that garden and getting $50 worth of vegetables or not. And uh, for us, it's very worthwhile. We've been gardening all our life. Um, if you're only starting... I would suggest start small, you know, have a few seeds in. And, and Joe's in a small place there too. So it's a bit hard for you, Joe, to, to grow things. I know that with your father and mother there and, and you haven't got the space that we have. That's something we'll touch on later on in the in the live. G'day, Pete. Good to see you back again. Pete's been um, away not well for a few months, but he's back on track. And we saw your video this morning. We were really happy to see you ma back, mate. That's good. Um, so, yeah, what Joe's saying there is so true. We, Wayne and I have seen so many people, we're going to do gardening, and they do. They spend a lot of money. And I'm thinking, no, it's about survival, not showing off what your best, um, you know, garden beds are and all the rest of it and so when we were first married we had um, very basic tools and we we learned as we went along both our parents gardened and we did it on the cheap and we've always done it that way and that's one thing that Wayne and I've always said too when we started our channel we wanted to make it duplicatable so anyone regardless of whether they got ten dollars or whether they got ten thousand dollars can learn off us. You know, there's a lot of things you don't see on our farm because it's not duplicatable to most people. We want to share with you guys what you can do in your life and you tell us what you're doing. Ness, great to see you. Trombone, zucchini, wow. Thai chilies, beautiful. I love Thai chilies. Eggplants, sweet peas, capsicum, herbs, tomatoes. Now, Ness, I think you're up in, can you tell us where you are? I think you're up in Queensland too. So you can you can grow those things at the moment, which is great. Okay, you didn't, a green thumb prepper said he didn't even list everything. I know, that would be right. And check, I'll say check out his channel. He's got a good garden going there. Plus I'm going to start direct seeded into the garden. Yeah, well, that's another point there too, green thumb. A lot of us um, grow our own seedlings and then transplant them out. And uh, But then some of us are thinking, well, that's I've always done that, and Wayne and I have. But now I'm starting to think now, no, I can save that two weeks of the transplant time over and growing them like that because they've got to adapt into the soil. I'm going to start trying to do direct seeding a lot more too, a lot less work too. Jean W., I love gardening. I haven't been able to start an outdoor garden yet this year. I still have time for fall plants. I have herbs growing in my kitchen in a small greenhouse and aero garden and light. That's fantastic, Jean. So that's what I'm saying. We have a farm. Some people have a small backyard. Some people have a big backyard. Some only have a balcony. But you've got to do what you can with what you've got, as I always say, because um, – we are going to need, even if it's just medicinal herbs. Um, yeah, that's a big thing. Amy Howe, great to see you. Have been buying seeds when I see them. Still have tomatoes going here in the ACT. Gee, ACT is where Canberra is, for you that don't know, here in Australia, and it's a quite a cold climate in, you know, in winter. Need them to finish so I can plant some other items. There you go. That's good. Okay, let me read down here. Thanks, JT, for putting um, Krista's channel up and, and kicking at Homestead. How are you? Good to see you. Auslander Jack, I missed you. G'day. Just got back from picking up some pavers here. Okay, well, our daughter and son-in-law did a lot of paving over the weekend. Good to see you, Jack. Homestead Oz, you have much better resources where you're at. Exactly. And Wayne and I appreciate that. But we, we are seeing, like when our daughter and Leon lived in the city, 
they only had a balcony and they would come back here excited seeing us doing our garden. So they got a lemon tree. I think they got an orange tree. They had zucchinis growing, tomatoes just on their little balcony. And they, it was a few cucumbers. There was a few other things they had. And they had some good food that I think it was 12 months ago. Yeah. Robert, great to see you. Yeah, I'm glad I'm back home too. Now I can boss Wayne around a bit more, can't I? So, <laughs> yeah. No, I don't think he likes me in those places. All right, now. Okay, Teresa D said, I'm growing peas in milk jugs and using my carport poles as running up. See, there's improvisation. Teresa D, you're on to it. That is great. And we see a lot of the Filipino people do that. They have very small space and they do a lot of vertical garden, gardening. That's a really clever idea. So you've thought that out well. Yeah. Um, big garden. Um, Kathy, big garden. Okay, she always does have a big garden. Saving seeds is a great way to save money. Share a garden with someone else, community gardens, barter for resources. Exactly. There's a lot of community gardens. And I know when I lived in the city for a little while, just coming on and off when I was working there, I'd always go around and I'd, Wayne said, what are you doing? I said, I'm walking around to see if there's any community gardens here. I'm looking around to see... Uh, if people are sharing, you know, neighbours have got gardens and I think, well, that's great. They're set up for in the future. They'll share produce between over the fence. Here's some oranges for you. Here's some tomatoes for you. Yeah, that's really good. Okay, Jean W, the Aero Garden is year round, so you can start it whenever. I'm still learning to garden. I have to claim a yard spot here. That is why I don't have an outdoor garden. Yeah, Jean W, that's right. Well, I've seen those aero gardens. They're fantastic. And anyone that hasn't uh, seen them before, do some research. Look them up if you haven't got much space. They're fantastic for that. Okay, Krista says, we have a nasty agricultural bill getting passed in Victoria. You were right, Krista. That's half the reason. In fact, Krista, that's the whole reason I'm doing this live today. Because, you know, when they tell us we can't do something, what does Lynn do? I say, no, we can do it somehow, some way. That's the thing. Part of it is not so good for the home food garden. Now, Krista, I read the legislation on that. Quite a few friends and were telling me about it. And I can see some ways around that. So guerrilla gardening is one of those. And if you don't know what guerrilla gardening is, that's like planting things out, you know, with... A lot of people don't identify vegetables, like even a pumpkin. They've never grown a garden, so they're not going to uh, pinch it on you. So guerrilla gardening, if you're in the city, might be a way that you might have to garden. Like, um, yeah, and remember, the, it's going to be drones a lot that they're going to use. They're not going to use foot soldiers. They have got officers ready to go on that. But drones area, well... Plant things under trees and they're going to not be as good with it's not as much sunshine, but at least they're covered from, you know, the, those drones snooping around you, that's for sure. Jenny, Northern Girl Hobbies, my dear from Canada, great to see you. You can't stay, Jenny, I understand totally. Jenny's a busy girl, always a busy girl. Yeah, and she's got an awesome channel too, you know. A lot of you, or in fact, everyone on here that's here, You've all got awesome channels. You've all been helping lift us all up over this time in the last two years. We appreciate it. I was just saying that to someone this morning on a live chat. I said, you know, without this community, and I'll say it again, I always say it, a lot of us don't know how we would, would be emotionally. It's kept our hearts warm. It's kept, uh, we've thought of other people, they've thought of us. We've shared knowledge and skills. It's been wonderful, really great. Okay. Uh, let me see. Let me see. I'm reading, reading, reading. Give me a minute. Uh, yeah, well, Green Thumb Prepper said it. Krista just refused to play their game. Feeding yourself is an inalienable right. Exactly. And there are a few loopholes, you know, with the law there too. So, uh, yeah, I'll talk about that maybe another day once I've reread the legislation. I was just a bit busy last little while but it came out about a fortnight ago I think and a lot of people are very paranoid and scared about it I would suggest that 
you don't have that attitude, I would suggest find solutions. There's always solutions. Look at the communist countries, how the regimes they've lived under, they coped. We've got to get back to that, you know, of uh, thinking how in in African countries and, and R- Russia, of course, and, and China, how they coped with a lot of uh, laws and, and just heavy regime on them. That's how we've got to think right now. Okay. Auslander said, Jack said, resources, use what you have at your disposal. Exactly. From gum tree for free stuff to fences for vertical gardens to the front yard. Don't be a a pom a pom bugger with the lawns. Yeah. <laughs> Plant fruit trees in Moringa. Yeah, well, Moringa's fantastic, Jack. You're right there. And I think a lot of you know how good Moringa is for arthritis and different things. Again, medicinal herbs, Jack, that's it. But Jack's right there. Like, you, you, there's so much free stuff on. I think a lot of you have Craig's lift, we, list. We have, um, we have Gumtree and uh, Facebook and all the rest of it that people just get, I don't want this stuff in here. And I'm not, they charge us if we take anything to the tip here, you know. You can just take a little tiny thing to the tip and there's $15 gone out of your wallet. So people prefer to give it away for free. Okay, so let's go down here. Little Frenchie in Big Texas, good to see you. You'd be um, warming up there a little bit at the moment. I have noticed too a lot of you have humidity. Uh, We had a very humid summer and now a lot of you are having very early humidity in spring in the northern hemisphere. That's a big issue with gardening. So a lot of you might have to think about getting some, uh, you know, fungal control, natural fungal control if you can. If that doesn't work, if it's too heavy, you're going to have to use a little something a little bit heavier. We do need to, when when we get that more humid weather, to uh, we get more diseases and we get more, um, oh, it's just crazy. Like plants, plants grow like crazy in the humidity, but a lot of times the food, the, the vegetables can rot too because the hum, humid environment is so moist that the, the squash might rot or whatever. So you're going to get, have to get onto that ahead of time. Just have something behind or look up. Uh, you know, on your cupboard that you've bought from the garden supplies that inhibits that fungal growth or uh, look up some sprays naturally you can make. Some of you might even have some homemade recipes. If you want to put them in the live chat now, what you use for fungal control, if it affects a lot of the squashes, zucchinis, a a lot of vegetables. Uh, Yeah, companion planting is very important. A lot of you know companion planting. I need to start... uh, doing that I did for years I haven't the last few years because I've been trying to grow a lot of as you see in our previous videos I've been trying to grow a uh, long row so I can just get it canned and get it frozen and whatever so we've got a lot of food stored away uh, but I'm going to get back to companion planting too kicking it in homestead I'm hanging water bottles upside down connected by jute yes I've seen that before for fresh herbs ready to cut all year round. That's a fantastic idea. Yeah, I've seen a few videos on that and I've got them all hanging around and they're growing magnificently. It's a great idea and Jude's pretty strong. Okay, Arkansas Living said, my God, they're making it against the law to grow vegetables here. Yeah, that's right, Ark, they are. Now, you know Wayne and I are in the country all of you so it's a little bit easier for us you know to hide away but for those people that are living in suburbia or you know bigger towns they will be policing you more so you're going to have to be quite smart on how you work that i think they're going to take a little bit of time to get organized with that you know they like to put out the fear first and scare us all they've done that for two years and then um you know with most government departments it takes them a bit to get organized so get your thinking caps on of how you're going to get around that for those of us in victoria okay a secret garden sounds romantic yeah well that's what it's going to be i think you know and one and i have the guise of being farmers too so i think yeah we might be okay, but who knows? The farmers here have, it's all about farm legislation, that legislation as well. It's not just about home gardeners. So we've been on to that for the last 12 months. They've really hammered us 
with farming here and we've just put our foots down and, and Wayne and I and we're like, no, our foot's our feet, our feet down. No, we're not going that way. We know where we want to go. We want to be self-sufficient, self-reliant, um, prepare for the future and uh, keep our hearts warm. You're not making our hearts go cold. Any regime, anything, we're, we're staying who we are. That's the main thing. Nature woman, great to see you, Kirsten. Good to see you. Yeah, I'm feeling a lot better. Uh, I still got all the numbness there. I can't feel in my arm a bit, but I saw a lot worse in hospital, that's for sure. It wasn't a pretty sight. Okay, Auslander says, Arkansas living, yes, spot on. Right now it is illegal to collect your own seeds from your produce. Now it is all being banned under the pretense of biohazard. Yes. When I read the Biosecurity Act 2015, uh, oh, probably, yeah, it was probably about 2016 I read that Biosecurity Act, I'm like, hmm, I can see where they're going here. They don't word it that way, but you can read between the lines and you can see where they were heading. Okay, I hope I haven't missed. Be charming. Great to see you. Klingons here. Great to see you. No to all Aussies, Jack said. No matter where you are, research Moringa. It is labelled as a miracle tree. Yes, it really is. I've seen uh, an African friend of ours, Serge. He he grows a lot and sells it. And he, he touted how good it was. From having enough vitamins and minerals to sustain life to growing almost anywhere. Exactly right. Okay, now Kathy put up a good point here. LAB, lab, is great for fungal suppression, lactic acid bacteria. It is a Korean method made from fermented rice water. You are exactly right, Kathy. Wayne and I made some here and it worked miracles. It was great for building microbes in the soil too. It was really great stuff. So Anyone want to write that down, what Kathy said? It's cheap and easy to make from fermented rice water. Really good. Okay, green thumb prepper. Oh, sorry, I'm way behind in the chat. Sorry, guys. Uh, green thumb, you wrote one tablespoon of baking soda, one tablespoon of olive oil, a few drops of dish soap, a gallon of water to fight powdery mildew. That's right. I, I remember... Um, I think Wayne's father used to make that similar. Yeah, baking powder is fantastic for the garden. I use buttermilk, says Jan, mixed with water for fungus and mildew. I've never heard that before, but that's probably the same concept of what Kathy said, the lactic acid bacteria, because buttermilk is, uh, you know, bacteria growing and all the rest. Okay, Uh it works if you catch it as soon as you see it. Now, you're right, Jan. That's the other thing I want to say. If you've got any powdery mildew or any fungal diseases or, or uh, you know, black spot, whatever you're seeing on your fruit trees or your garden, you've got to get onto it early. Exactly right. Okay. Let's see here. Paula says, I have moringa growing in a pot. It's a great medicinal plant. Yeah. I've, I've, I watched, I think it was Big Family Homestead. A few years ago, and Brad there, he was just touting the virtues of Moringa and he had really bad arthritis and he said it really helped him really good. Josh is here. There we go. He didn't stay up too late last night. Good to see you, Josh. Remember, he's a few hours behind us. Some of you were quite a few hours behind us, like a day and a half. But, um, yeah, here we go. What else? Bio B. Bio B, yes. Oh, Garden Koi. Yeah, I got it. I got it. I got what you said. Hello, Lynn from USA, Garden Koi said. Garden Koi is a very straight out person and that's why we love them. Okay, SJ Mullen, good to see you. And everyone here, yeah, it's good to see you, SJ. Okay, uh, Kicking at Homestead says, I have Moringa leaf powder. Yes, beet and is it, I won't say, I can't pronounce it right. This with this, I'm not printing. And lion's mane. I guess I'll make smoothies and tea. Tea. Yeah, a lot of people have been saying about lion's mane. Look that up if you don't know that. But that's fantastic for um, arthritis and joint pain. And I think it's good for the heart too, which is really good. Um, I think it's going good here. Okay. Deborah says I'm from San Antonio. Okay. Thank you for your service. Helps, helped build Ronick McDonald houses at BAMC. Okay, rightio. 
All right, so uh, the next thing I wanted to say was, I'm asking the question, have any, are any of you growing extra food to uh, create relationships with neighbours or, or um, give to family members? Because a lot of times it's showing don't tell, you know, like Wayne and I would much rather see a sermon, as you know our favourite saying, than uh, we'd much rather see a sermon than hear one any day. And if people are seeing you uh, garden, oh, milk kefir, sorry, I'll get sidetracked. Lynn, we use milk kefir. Oh, that's a good one because I make my own kefir. I'll remember that, Deborah. Okay, so, you know, when you're driving around, you're going to town or whatever, you do, if, if you're thinking of having a garden or you're a gardener, you do pick out every garden, you know, vegetable garden growing and you're watching them grow every time you might go into town or visit wherever you've got to visit. But... Uh, you know, that, that is a fantastic relationship builder. If you, so many times Wayne and I have um, taken a basket of vegetables to someone or a bag of vegetables to someone and their eyes light up because they know that we've grown that here. And neighbour Mark grows beautiful ber berries and he's given us beautiful berries in the past and uh, it's really, really nice to share around. But it's also giving them a taste of home produce. It tastes totally different to the shop. So hopefully they get addicted to that nice taste, that good quality, the better vitamins, and then they'll start to get interested themselves in growing. Okay. Teresa D said, yes, the grandsons want to give tomatoes away beside the road on a table. Well, there you go. You know, that's a great idea. They'd be snapped up here pretty quick, I think, if we did that. Um Jack says we keep quiet. We kept quiet up until the lockdowns, and we broke our silence again about prepping. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, we we felt strong that things were turning bad, and that's when we decided to do our channel and start helping share our skills and knowledge, what Wayne and I know here, because we were finding a lot of people were losing the skills and knowledge of the past. Uh, MD Creekmore did a great video this week on he was saying that you know the skills are lost it's something that we always talk about Wayne and I and a lot of you do too but he's, he's so right there we do have to go back to basics and gardening is the the basic of basics as far as survival goes okay Deborah says Lynn we share our eggs here with our neighbors but hide all other preps Good idea. Years and years ago, about 25 years ago, I used to be on a lot of survival and prepper. They didn't have YouTube then, but it was all on forums and everything. And everyone was saying, you know, stack up box of whiskey and cigarettes and all this and, and food because you're going to barter with them. Well, Wayne's, in my opinion, was no, vegetables are something they think, well, you're just growing, you're not, you're not hoarding a whole heap of food and you're not, um, you know, there's a lot of people out there we can't trust. And, uh, yeah, when things turn bad, we know even good people turn bad sometimes. So that's what we have to be aware of. And so um, giving away fruit and vegetables is a safe thing, really, uh, because a lot of them know that you've got home security too. Most of us have. If you haven't worked out your home security, I'd suggest strongly you get all that worked out pretty fast. And, um, yeah. It's just not looking like you're a crazy prepper who might have hoarded a million things. Okay, uh, let me see here. I share plants. See, Jan's on the right track there. That's the next point I was going to bring up is if you grow some seedlings, you've got 20 cauliflowers. Well, you know, you, you might want 15 of those for, for bottling and for keeping for yourself and giving away to friends. But give sharing plants like Jan said, well, yeah, exactly. That, that way they don't climb my fence to get my produce. I also share produce. So do my family neighbours. Well, see, that's the good security uh, thing you've done there, Jan. You're getting them to grow. Let them take responsibility. Exactly. If neighbours aren't and they're relying on yours, give them some plants. Let them get started. Homestead Aquarius. Robert says, I've been a fan of MD Creekmore for a long time. He's a great guy, yes. And if anyone hasn't been watching MD, I'd suggest you go over and watch. He's a great guy. I've been talking common sense, especially the last couple of months. He's been putting out some great videos. Okay, Joe says, skills are the important thing you need. You can get by on almost no gear, but skills 
are, and good skills are a must. And Joe knows a lot of medical skills that I don't know because he looks after his mum and dad. So, you know, he's right on track there. There's so many skills, you know. A lot of people can grow the fruit and vegetables, but they don't know how to, uh, the skill of canning and the skill of uh, drying, the skill of cooking even. Like, you know, it's a, it's a whole gamut that we have to think of is you've got to make a meal nice out of the vegetables in your garden. So if you know how to season them properly, if you know how to, uh, you know, I always have lots of butter here, as you know, and that's really important to Wayne and I, a bit of morale food. When butter put on vegetables makes mashed potato, anything really good. Okay, vegetables and seeds are going to be the best for bartering. Totally agree, Josh, totally agree. And seeds, yeah, Kathy, you're right there, and seeds, yeah. Oh, Militant Roots is in, great to see you. I'd sure hate to catch someone climbing my fences. Yeah, I know, exactly. And I think Wayne's the same there, Militant. You know, I'm pretty low-key on here, but, yeah, we've got our plans in place. We, you know, you've just got to be careful, and especially those of you who live in the city. You have to be aware of who your neighbours are, and most people don't even know who their neighbours are. They might have lived in the same place for, for five years. You've got to get to know them uh, a little bit, so... You find out whether you can trust them or not. But I'm getting off topic with garden here. You know, I can start talking for ages about scenarios and prepping and all the rest. That'll be in the future a bit more. Okay. Krista says, I remember as a kid 50-plus years ago how our community as new Australians, we helped each other out. Exactly. There was the Greeks, the, the, the Italians, the Polish, all beautiful people. We had a lot of Italians up here, and they all helped each other out. Not sure what, what we ate at times, times, but mum made it taste great. Exactly. Where there's a will, there's a way. Yeah. Okay. Jack says, Johnny Appleseed is a great book story about how to spread the wealth and make all sorts of areas out there valuable to all of us in Australia. Hint, hint, wink, wink. Yeah, exactly, Jack. One minute, guys. Can you please, while I just let out Cammy, my cat, she's howling at the door, uh, just write up five packets of your most, the seeds that you value the most, are five seeds that you value the most. If you don't mind writing that up in the chat, and by the time you do that, I'll be back letting after letting Cammy out. Cammy, come on. Come on, Cammy. Come on, Cammy. Come on, Okay, she's out now. She's 16 years old and thinks she's still like two years old, I think, that cat. Okay, uh, let me see here, the chat here. I don't think I'm seeing it all. Adapt 2030. Yeah, there's another great channel, you're right there. Lady of Huntington, great to see you. Too many people will sit back and watch you work in your garden and steal you blind when you go on vacation. That's right, exactly. You know, it's the old, it reminds me of the old joke of the farmer that had the watermelon patch and he said there was one, one watermelon that had poison in it. And, uh, you know, so no, so no one would touch his watermelons. Exactly. Okay, so here we go. We're getting the list coming through. Uh, Kathy said pumpkin, zucchini, cabbage, eggplants and some herbs too. Yeah, pumpkins would be one of my favourites. Exactly, Kathy, that's great. Devil said peppers, tomato, squash and cucumber. See, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to make you think what are your favourite things you like to eat but also what you know that you can grow well too because usually we'll favour the seeds that we grow easily. You know, some things are harder to grow than others. Uh, JT says beans, carrots, beans, beans, beans. Yep, you're right, JT. Beans, carrots, onion, pepper, tomato. Full of hope. Our beautiful Irish friend is here. She says cabbage. Yeah, well, cabbage grows well over there in Ireland. Parsnips, carrots, tomatoes and peppers. Now, full of hope. 
I was thinking you might have said potatoes being an Irish girl, but you said parsnips. There you go. So that's good to hear. Parsnips are great for baking. They're great for soups. Hoot House said okra, tomatoes, watermelon, cantaloupe, crowder peas. Now, I don't know what crowder peas are. Kathy, you might have heard of them and Josh here, but I haven't here in Australia. I kind of go the old school, you know, the ones that our fathers grew a lot. But crowder peas, interesting. Teresa D said carrots, tomatoes, onions, potatoes and some beans. Green Thumb said tomatoes, cubes, peppers, cannabis and carrots. Okay, Green Thumb, got ya. Pumpkin, beans, onion, tomato, potatoes. Now, they're our five favourites too, Jack. And um, Jack's from Melbourne, Victoria, so it's a, it's a typical Victorian answer, that one. Yeah, that was a good one. And so you've got your pumpkins, onions and potatoes. They'll keep throughout the year if you store them right. The tomatoes you can can, the beans you can can. So, yes, yeah, spot on, Jack. Gene W, cucumbers, peppers, tomatoes, spinach. A lot of people grow spinach. It's great for iron, great for salads. Yes, yeah, zucchini. Rowan, great to see you, Rowan. I don't think I saw you early. I might have. Beans, carrots, tomatoes, pumpkins, zucchini. And... And many more, exactly. Some people don't have favourites. I just thought if you could pick five, what would you take with you if you had to go on a desert island somewhere, you know? Tomatoes, peppers, beans and squash, melons and pumpkins, Jan said. Now, Josh said Queensland blue pumpkin. That's our favourite pumpkin, yeah. Aztec corn, Josh loves his Aztec corn. Beetroot, yeah, beetroot's one of our favourites. You can do so much with beetroot and so good for you for blood cleansing too and iron and all the rest. Frost beans, yeah, and onion, that's it. SJ Mullen, onions, peppers, tomatoes, potatoes, zucchini, yep, the basics. Lady of Huntington said broad beans, tomatoes, capsicums, zucchini and pumpkin. Yeah, broad beans, I don't know whether the people in the Northern Hemisphere grow a lot of broad beans. You can tell us here, but they're a favourite. They're always a favourite of my dad's. He grew a lot of broad beans. You've got to be careful of, um, oh, what are the little black things? Aphids, right? You've got to be careful of aphids here with broad beans. And how I get around that is I spray the broad beans with uh, garlics and soap spray, and that gets rid of them pretty fast. Onions and lettuce grow best here, Devil says. Yeah, well, see, lettuce is so handy. You can just pick leaves off. A lot of people cut the lettuces off and then start again, but why and I prefer to let them grow as long as we can and just take the outside leaves off, and then uh, they just keep growing so I don't have to keep planting new lettuces all the time. But I do grow too many at a time. Wayne's settling me down. He's saying, Link, don't grow 20 lettuces at a time. Just kind of cut it down to five maybe, you know. I get very enthusiastic and, yeah. Okay. Potatoes are a given. Yeah, chits, chits not seeds. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Paula Ainsley said, bean, sugar, snap peas. Sugar, snap peas are beautiful. And uh, lettuce, cabbage and cauliflower. Well, see, it's that time of year that we can all put in our cauliflower, our broccoli down here in the southern hemisphere. That's it. No, it's not because technically they are all pumpkins. Okay, got you, Jam. Okay, Michelle Moore says, yellow butter beans. Mmm, they're good. Cherry tomatoes. We'll see cherry tomatoes and tiny tom tomatoes. They're so prolific, but they don't get much disease. The bigger your tomato, the more chance you have of getting disease. The smaller tomato you grow, they, they, they get um, ripe faster. But also those smaller tomatoes, those plants are a lot more resilient to a lot of the diseases too. So just remember that one. Cherry tomato, zucchini, cucumbers and pak choy. I grow a lot of that. It's great. I feed it to our chickens, chooks we say, and uh, they just love it, absolutely love it. Uh, I, that's another thing I wanted to bring up too. Think about your garden for, and I know I've probably missed a few. I'll keep reading here in a minute. But think about your garden for uh, if you've got chooks, as we say. I grow a lot of silver beet, pak choy. I grow, and then the lettuce that I grew extra. It was all those greens. I'd always grow a lot more and then throw them to the chooks and they just, you know, a few buckets every day I had extra from our garden and, and our scraps from our kitchen. Uh, 
and it just cut my cost down for feeding those chickens all the time. The other thing was that uh, uh, mum used to, and my grandmother used to buy what they call pollard, and I think it's just wheat bran. It was big bags of it, and all the scraps. My grandmother used to have a big pot on the stove. She'd mix water and pollard and some salt, I think, and put all those scraps and everything in it. And that's how she fed her chook. She didn't go and buy expensive chook food and all the rest. She did that all the time. I was always stirring that pot. You know, I'm, I'm a good pot stirrer, but I was always stirring that pot. And and mum did the same. We always improvised with uh, how we, you know, cut down our costs for feeding our animals here. I grow vegetables and put in the dog food too, so that's something you can think about. If you haven't got the room, I understand, but if you've got the room, great to grow that extra. All right, sorry, guys, I'm well behind in the chat. Let me hear you. Okay. Oh, Ash is here. Great to see Oh, Ash and Nat, they're just up the road from us. Great to see you. Good to see you both. Yeah, from over the hill. <laughs> That's it. And we've got Nat and Ash on an earlier video, you'll see, when we were doing some canning together, which was really good. Yeah, Kathy says, I grow way too much at once. I'm going to be doing more succession planning this year. Yeah, that's two of us, Kathy. We'll we'll get on the phone and we'll combine combine ideas. I think Rowan says Queensland blue is the best tasting pumpkin. Well, you're biased like me, Rowan. Yeah, and there's another one too. It's called Ironbark. Ironbark pumpkin. Some of you might know that, but it's you've got to have an axe and cut it. But it is the most beautiful pumpkin to bake. Similar to Queensland blue, but a bit darker and drier. But it's really great, really good. Okay, Labradorite's in here too. Hello. Good to see you. One second, guys. I'll just have a little drink. Okay. Okay, okay. So Paula says, my dad grows greens in his old swimming pool. He converted it to a... No, sorry, his whole swimming pool, he converted it to a fish pond and feeds those greens along with other foods to his fish. See, that's improvisation. He didn't want to use a swimming pool anymore, so he thought about having a fish pond. He also he has aquaponics growing system going too. Yeah, well, Josh knows about the aquaponics. My mum does too. Wayne and I have never done aquaponics here, but it's something to think about if you're living in a small apartment uh, you can grow a lot of food doing aquaponics. Mum set one up about 12 months ago because she was didn't have much room to grow a garden and she's an avid gardener and uh, grew quite a few things in that. Josh has got some old videos on his aquaponics when he was living in town. Okay. Oh, you gave your pup cucumber for the first time, JT. She took the stick and ran off with it. She loved it. <laughs> yeah. Well, we've got quite a few dogs here and um, I used to have them in the garden a lot and they'd go and eat my blueberries and my broccoli and, yeah, dogs like vegetables. Exactly right. It's good for them. Okay. Okay, kicking it says, I haven't seen crowded beans in 40 years. They had them here in Al Alabama. Okay, well, a friend of ours, Fitz Preacher, yeah, he wanted some brown beauty seeds, so we sent him some brown beauty seeds uh about two years ago. I never thought that he'd receive them, but he did. But brown beauty seeds was what his grandmother used to make a beautiful, uh, beans, I mean, brown beauty beans. His grandmother used to make a beautiful uh, salad out of, and he was really hankering for that salad and he couldn't get them there. Seeds are going to be coming in more short supply. We know that. We're seeing everyone say at the moment that they're swapping. They're saying a certain bean is a bean in a packet, but it's not really. Like you might have a brown beauty seed there. It's labelled as that. And when you grow it, it could be a Windsor long pod. I tell you, there's a lot of corruption going on in the seed world at the moment. They don't do that to the farmers when they buy bulk, but for the common gardener, they think they can be sneaky and swap them if they're running short and they know what's popular. They'll rebrand that. It happened to Danny, I know, uh, last week actually. Danny and Wanda from Deep South Homestead. But you yeah, just be aware that that's why I'm, I'm encouraging everyone to buy their seeds now because there'll be a lot more corruption and a lot more 
uh, well, the, se the seeds aren't getting grown, guys. They're really not, you know. They're, they're running out of the seeds. You think about where are you seeing seeds being grown and you go do some research on that. I did that about five years ago. I was not seeing the, um, you know, in Brazil they used to grow a lot of seeds in South America. They're not doing that now. The, the corporations are shutting them down. You know, save your heirloom seeds, Kathy said. That's it, exact, exactly. All right, so Jack says, just a suggestion, while the smog dwellers are fighting over TP, Go check out the vitamins, meds and protein powders on the shelves, yeah, the toilet paper, and start reading free local newspapers for the tushy. Yeah, <laughs> that's right, Jazz. <laughs> exactly. Very Soleil, great to see you. Good to see you. Okay, I'm just going back a minute because I think I've missed. Okay. Yeah, so Josh said he misses his aquaponic system. He had a good one going there. Mm. Josh is had to adapt with the times and he's doing totally different gardening now. Kathy says lots of people get plants that don't match the pictures on the packets. Exactly. There's a lot of it's to me it's just corruption, you know. They make their money. You're not going to you've grown those seeds. You can't take the packet back. Yeah, I agree. Okay, so Krista said, yeah, bought loads of them last year. Yeah, I've bought a few too. I'm thinking that doesn't look like what I, that tomato looks a bit different. And, you know, I know my tomatoes. I've grown them for 35 years. I'm thinking that's not a gross lissy. You know, I know what a gross lissy looks like. Okay, all right. Swap seeds with your friends. And Kathy does that. She does that amazingly. And, uh, yeah, Josh does too. We're getting more serious with our seed saving this year. Last year we were a bit quieter on it. I did save some lettuce and a few other things, but we're getting serious with that now this year. Uh, my Kicking It Homestead says, uh, I'll just see the time. We've got another probably 15 minutes, guys. He says, uh, my crazy neighbour is out on the property line building a fence. Haha, uh -huh, thank you for helping keep my animals in. Now he's keeping himself from trespassing. I wonder if it's barbed wire, laugh out loud. Yeah, yeah, let him do it, kicking it. That's right. Good idea. Yeah, you did have to adapt, Josh, that's for sure. All right, so uh, there was a lot more things I wanted to talk about, but we've only, I do want to just make it the hour. And you guys have got lots more things to do than talk to Lynn on Homestead Oz, but you just wanted to pop over and say hello and have a good chat, so I won't extend it too long. Okay, so uh, one of the things that I wanted to ask was how many of you are growing berries because uh, it's something Wayne and I don't do. Mark, our neighbour, does that. We have a lot of fruit trees, as you know. But I've got a few blueberries, always grow on blueberries, but how many of you have a, a raspberry plant or or something like that? I did notice someone in the chat just reminded me I was going to ask that. That was kicking it. He's got raspberries, strawberries, blackberries, blueberries. Yeah, that's good. See, blueberries, they're full of vitamin C. That's what we need. Yeah, exactly. Okay, Kathy said, especially save the seeds that grow well in your area. You will get a... Yeah, a better germination rate. That's right. Don't bother with exotic seeds. You'll find what will feed you. Exactly. It's come down. Again, I'll emphasize the fact that we're talking about survival gardens. I call them victory gardens. A lot of you two, you people out there do too. This is what we're talking about. We're not talking about, oh, I'm bored. I just want to uh, start a garden on the weekend. And so what if it doesn't work out? No. We're talking serious business here. We're talking about survival, food, food, food. Food shortages are here. Food shortages are going to get worse. We know that. The reports are all out. The governments are now saying it. Uh, a lot of you Australians remember John Howard. Back in the 90s, he actually said, and I wish I'd recorded it, um, but I saw it a couple of years ago, John Howard, our Prime Minister, said, when it comes to uh, 2020. Uh, two to 2025, Australia will see food shortages. That was back in the 90s he said that, okay? So you Aussies just take heed. It's true. Our Prime Minister's knew it was all planned, as we know. So we can do better planning. We can plan our gardens, our herb gardens, our fruit trees. If we can just have one fruit tree, 
Okay, Roanne says here, blackberries grow wild in our backyard. See, that's why we don't grow them too, Roanne. We've got blackberries around the river. Wayne keeps a few bushes, our neighbour does too, across the river. And Wayne not, and I know all the spots. And we have asparagus growing all along our old railway line that the train used to take the asparagus and some fell off and started growing. So I've got that growing. You know, I know where they are. I can go wild forage them. You've seen Wayne's video on wild foraging. We could find anything and everything around here. We're in a good area. But in the city you can too. Dandelion, you name it. There's plenty of things growing in the city you can wild forage. Okay. Okay, Labradite said, well, I didn't know he did say that. Yeah, I was really surprised, Labradite, when I saw that. Yeah, Robert says, I love food that grows itself and spreads. And if you go to Robert's channel and look on previous videos, especially a year ago you were doing a lot of that, Robert, of things that he likes to put in there that are uh, perennials or, you know, any companion plants and does all that. It's so true. Okay, Labradite says, okay, Jean W says, wild fruit, blueberries, blackberries, raspberries and cranberries. And why am I go camping? I look for the wild raspberries, Jean W and everyone here. You see me as soon as I go camping, I'm off. I'm looking for what I can find in the bush. You know, it's usually blackberries, raspberries, lots of um, wild herbs I can pick and I make a tea out of them for Wayne and I. Okay, Labradite said the coming, Morrison said the coming decade will be poorer, more disorderly, more dangerous. Yeah, with a smile on his face, he says that. I don't think he's too concerned about us surfs really that much Labradite, but they like to brag about it, what they're doing. Yeah, spot on. Okay, Green Thumb and Klingon both say they've got blackberries, blueberries, grapes, huckleberries, had to leave glue, go, had to leave gooseberries, blackberries, black raspberry at the homestead. Well, Green Thumb, you can't have chooks or chickens there either at the moment where you are, but you're making do. I remember at the other place you did have. Kicking it said, we bought an Alaska sawmill. It makes beautiful slab boards. It would. Yeah, that's right, Kicking it. They would. My dad was a a, a bushman and a, a, he'd made slab boards and used to sell them to people. And he made all the sleepers for the railways. But Dad was an avid gardener. He loved gardening. And so did Wayne's dad, both of them. They loved gardening, you know. And that's what you've got to do. You've got to have the love for it. We, I don't want anyone out there to listen to me and think, oh, well, I'm scared of what's happening in the future. I want to, um, you know, I've got to get a garden going because I'm so frantic of what's going to happen. No, enjoy your life. Enjoy the fresh air. Enjoy the garden. That's what it's all about. Don't let them steal your joy. That's what they want to do. You know, the more prepared you are, the more planned you are for the coming years ahead, which are going to be rough, the happier you will be. People can survive on very little. We don't really understand how little we can survive and still be happy on. We've had such an easy life here. But, you know, I tell you, gardening is great for your mental uh, health and it's just so good for your physical health. And, you know, I, I've known so many great gardeners that have passed on now, but when they were stressed or they wanted to get away from the world, it was their garden they went to, you know. So that's what I'm saying. Don't do it as well. This is what I must do to survive and things, bad things are coming. Yes, bad things are coming, but enjoy your garden. That's what I can say. Okay. Done that sermon. All right. <laughs> uh, okay. Let me see here. What did Jack say? Everyone's saying exactly. Remember one, one fact. Pollies are the biggest preppers with supplies and shelters for all of them. Exactly. That's right. You know, they've all got their bunkers and their, their seeds stored away and all the rest of it. We see that in America. There was a report up on the food that they've stored away that the public can't have, you know. So, yeah, if they can do it. We can do it even better. That's it. Okay, so kicking it says we forage for rose hips. Yeah, we do too when we go camping. Stinging nettle, yes. Doxycycline algae, okay. Huckleberries, uh, elderberries and moral Oh, oh, those mushrooms. Okay, yeah, a lot of people talk about those mushrooms, kicking it. Yeah, that's great. Krista says it's been a rough two years in Melbourne, but I'm still positive. I can tell you're positive, Krista. That's right. And it's actually been, you know, the more you prep and the more you, 
and you think about how to survive in the future, the more positive you should get. You're not confused. You're not like the masses out there that are just going along. You're becoming self-reliant and you're thinking for yourself. That's so important. Okay, I'll just see what the time is, everybody. Yeah, we've got probably about four. Oh, this one says 10 o'clock. Okay, yeah, we'll see. Okay, I think I might wind it up now, guys. Uh, if there's any questions, just put them in the, the chat now. But you're right, Krista, it's been a rough two years for all of us around the world. But, you know, when the going gets tough, the tough get going and that's the secret you know we've got to have challenges and face things if life was like it used to be a lot of us were cruising and uh we didn't have that many challenges in our life but you do when you face the challenges of life for survival you you do get an inner strength build up and you start to think about all the options of survival and it's a good thing you know and we're sharing that knowledge here Danny lines are everywhere kicking, it says. You can use them for homemade soap. I didn't realise that. Lavender's fantastic, yeah. Yeah, that's it, exactly. See, Labradite's down in Melbourne too with um, Krista. So, she, yeah, she's been through the similar circumstances of this crazy state. Okay, my gardens are my happy place. Zen, exactly, Green Thumb. Yeah, I agree. Okay, all right. So I'm going to say... Good night to everybody and good morning to everyone here in Australia. Time to get back to our roots and harden up. Jack is spot on. That's what Wayne and I think. And, you know, when Wayne and I get thrown those curb orbs, we always try and make a little bit of a joke out of it and see ways out of that situation. And if we can't get out of it, well, we live with it. So I hope you all do the same thing. It's been great chatting this morning to you all. Love you all, as you know. Wayne. And I'll be showing more homesteading skills in the future. We'll get back into that now a little bit more. And, um, yeah, just keep doing what you're doing, even if you can just get a, a couple of pots and you haven't started a garden. If there's someone on here watching right now, you haven't. Just think about that, you know. Inch by inch, it's a cinch is what I always say. And uh, on that note, we will see you soon. Okay, it's not going again. There we go. See you soon, guys.